Good morning, gentlemen. We are back at the old GE to retrofit a new defrost board. Some of you had suggested that I pushed it off a cliff, but we're going to take her a little bit farther. We'll see how far this baby can go. So we're going to put a new defrost board in her. That way we can test defrost and make sure everything's working properly. Hopefully she'll have smooth sailing for a while. Guys, I've taken I have our control panel up here. We had our timers in a row down here. I've taken this area and mounted our defrost control on a piece of sheet metal. Put a little bend in the sheet metal behind it to keep it rigid so we can do our wiring from here. We're going to grab some power from up here. Disconnect the old defrost thermostat so that there'll be no confusion. Because I'm not going to rip out every single control in here. It has to do with defrost because it's a lot of time you don't need to spend on it. Because if it's not initiating a defrost from here on out, we can run this control in parallel. It will function. The other ones will just be dormant for the rest of the life of the unit, which probably isn't all that long. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm taking the control voltage off of the outdoor fan motor contactor. What I'm going to do is instead of using the high voltage on the defrost board relay over here, I'm going to break the control voltage instead. So we'll just shut the power off to the coil of this contactor and cause the fan motor to stop during defrost. We have our two wires here on the outdoor fan motor relay. Run up to fan motor contactor. We're intercepting that wire going up there. Basically a jumper extends from the compressor contactor up to the fan motor contactor. We're just interrupting that at this relay. What we're going to do now is we're going to grab some of our low voltage power from our terminal strip right here and tie it into our board. This is our defrost board all wired up. Our two wires for the outdoor fan motor contactor. These are low voltage on this particular setup, which is how I designed it. Because it's a three phase motor, I figured this would be the easiest way to do it. Our defrost thermostat located back in the back back there. We have our, let's see, our red from the low voltage terminal board. W2, or white typically from the low voltage terminal board. You can see those connections up here. We have the two O's, uh, one coming in from the thermostat connection, one going out to the low voltage terminal board. We have our Y connection from the low voltage terminal board, and we have our common, which is B on these particular units, like a lot of trains or General Electrics from that time period. So we're going to start the unit up, see if it actually starts, see if we didn't blow her up. run for a few minutes and we'll test her out. Guys, we are inside the old mechanical room here. Some kids here. I guess they've seen their better day for whatever reason. You see this one's been destroyed right in there. This one as well. It'd be very interesting to get inside those and see how many of those are working or if they're still there at all. <laughs> I've just been removed. But letting our machine outside run for a moment while we wait for that sensor to get nice and cold. It should get cold, no problem today. Shuts off. Compressor switches to cooling. We're headed to reversing valve. See how long she takes before she comes back on. Well, my lovely wife called me, but everything worked pretty well. We stayed in defrost for about two minutes. Came out of defrost, back into heating. Everything worked as it was supposed to. So happy day. I'm gonna leave it on 30 minutes to get the maximum amount of defrost the least efficient setting but I want this thing to defrost as much as it needs to so I want to make sure we set it for the lowest amount of time because we got a big coil over there we only have one coil system on it so I want to make sure this thing is staying clear but that's about all for this one guys see you on the next one Cole, this is for you. This is the amperage on the compressor running right now. 
24.6. No doubt this will rise up a little bit before we're all said and done. We just went back into heating mode. Actually, I say that, then it goes down. But I think the uh, the rated load amps is 36, I believe, on this one. 